guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Supreme Leader and the expansion of course. We showed you the pre-Kickstarter video, now we have the main game along with the expansion, some promo stuff that we want to show you down below. So we will be giving you an ex explanation of the game and a detailed understanding of how to play. But if you want to see a full how to play or a full understanding, you can go to our previous video in the description below. In the game Supreme Leader, you're going to be playing from 5 to 10 players in about an hour or so for ages 30 and up and you're attempting to become the supreme leader of the world each player is going to get to choose between or select randomly uh, a supreme leader like jfk or maybe franklin roosevelt or cleopatra or how about somebody a little more uh dangerous like fidel castro i suppose uh, and you're going to be then gathering influence you're going to be gathering currency and you're going to be buying certain cards it is a player elimination game of sorts in which players are going to try and eliminate each other from card use as well as a voting phase but remember that's not the most important part the important part is when you eliminate people they are going to turn into the united nations and the united nations will have the opportunity to vote you as the supreme leader when there's only two players left in the game features kind of this survival style thing in the game that shows survival how you have to have the people who you voted out become your friends and want to let you win this features that same aspect there are also some cards that revive players from the un as well as certain choices that events have changed as well as a new added type of card which is called the political agenda card these are like secret victory objectives you can try and gather you'll pay for them and then you'll try and achieve them and gain the value as well as the influence below on the card but that's pretty much the idea of the game will you become the supreme or next supreme leader of the entire world let's go ahead and find out down below and then with my review so here we have the game supreme leader and everything that's going to be included in the game and there's quite a bit especially with the expanded content in the base game, you're going to get an assortment of different world leaders from JFK to Idi Amin to, uh, let's see here if I can pronounce them, Franklin Roosevelt, Julius Caesar, Fidel Castro, Adolf Hitler, the Emperor Hirohito, uh, Winston Churchill, Queen Elizabeth I, and many others. You're also going to be getting this player board here, this board I should say, where you're going to place down the event cards. And the event cards are going to be either green or red, and you're going to shuffle them up and place them down like this. There is an assortment of different types of events that will be based on the number of players in the game, but it's a nice little player board to have nonetheless. There's also going to be these new things which are called political agendas and political agendas are basically things you'll start out with and on your turn you can spend five currency to pick them up or exchange them to try and achieve their objectives. They're going to give you points at the end, uh, uh, they're going to give you basically influence and as well as like currency and uh it says here give all players 35 dollars if you do that you're then going to get 50 in return uh this one here is defy the order have the un vote for you but survive the elimination pretty pretty powerful there but all of these are basically hidden player objectives in the game if you've played the game before that's not such a new thing to where you're not going to understand how it functions it's just a nice, nice little additive to the game itself these are the cards in which you can purchase, like a terror attack or a Russian roulette or sanctions, a satellite state, security council, spoils of war, uh, proxy war, puppet government, rally the troops, so on and so forth. They're also going to have a uh, cost to them as well as an influence that is required in order for you to basically achieve uh they will play this card or buy this card and then it has an effect that you can use instantly or when it says specifically depending on the card this one says vote twice in the following round and then discard this you can discard this card and uh, then you're going to vote twice in the elimination round which is very 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 powerful uh, additionally, all of the expanded content is going to give you more of this stuff here, which is more of the cards that you can purchase, as well as new events that are going to focus pretty highly on the UN. And of course, new characters. Here is a few of them that have that are newer, I guess. Che Guevara, Mao Zedong, Saddam Hussein, uh, Ronald Reagan, Thomas... Uh, Zakar, and then these are all to be released characters, so no artwork just yet on these guys. But Margaret Th Thatcher, ooh, that's cool. Uh, Deng Xinping, uh, Kim Il Sung, uh, Augusto Sandino, <laughs> Nasser from Egypt, uh, Ivan the Terrible, Charles de Gaulle. Uh, let's see if I can pronounce some of these. I'm not gonna try on some of these. Mansa Musa, uh, King Leonidas, Simon Bolivar, Alexander the Great, and of course the Great Abraham Lincoln. A bunch of additional characters in the game, and you can kind of mix and match these how you want, as well as of course these cubes here, which are going to be used as your currency. I'm guessing they just denote the different types. That's how we use them for one, 
uh, five and ten or whatever. So you have these cubes that you can use to know how much currency you have that will allow you to buy cards in the game. But for the most part, that is what you get in the game. Supreme Leader as well as the expanded content. And I'm guessing these are promos here. Let's go ahead. I'll show you down below how quick idea of the rounds work. Of course, you can see my other video explain how those work. The only difference would be the inclusion of these political agendas, which you can buy for five. But we'll go down anyway. So I went ahead and set up a game of Supreme Leader for five players. And as you can see, everybody has a unique character assigned to them as well as a special ability that they can use whether it's once a game or it's a passive these are the currency that they will start with uh five seven eight five and five i have this bank here donating one five and tens for currency here as well as i gave every single player a political agenda these are basically hidden objectives the players are trying to achieve in order to gain currency and or more power uh, as well as I set up this deck here. This is the deck in which you're going to be trying to buy certain things, and the player with the most money will be buying certain things for the round. Now, to begin the game, obviously, you have your character, you've got your cards, you've got your currency, and then you made this deck, uh, shuffled this deck here, as well as laid out six cards, a three by three. Uh, then, of course, you're going to make the event deck, and in a five-player game, you simply take five of these event cards, and they're red, and shuffle them up and place them aside. And then you're pretty much ready to begin. You won't need to use any of the other cards in the game that's for another game uh so after production phase comes the buy phase and the player with the most money buys and then going clockwise after that every single other player will buy provided they can afford it. they can buy multiple cards there's a cost associated with the card as well as the influence for that le uh, the leader needs to have in order to obtain that specific card during every other buy phase cards will be removed from the stack and they'll be shifted along so that way a new card is going to come out every other round it will be this card as opposed to this one but cards are going to continuously come out regardless of whether people are buying them or not after that then it's going to go into deliberation the deliberation is pretty simple they're going to all accuse each other and try and get the majority of people to vote out one of these individual world leaders by simply pointing fingers but before that happens they have to determine what they want to do and they can choose to offer certain things make non-binding deals trade cards use the effects of their cards or special ability on other players in order to make sure they don't get eliminated during the next round which is going to be the elimination round the elimination round is pretty simple everybody's going to be pointing and any player who has been eliminated is going to also be able to collectively point they are called the un so for instance if charles de gaulle and che guevara were to get eliminated throughout this game they would actually form the united nations and they're going to get to make a collective vote to get rid of another player so they all will count as a singular vote and if at any point the un ties then the un's vote is forfeit so they want to make sure that they do not do that after the elimination phase is over, the one player like Mao Zedong here gets eliminated because everybody voted for him. He would also join the UN and the elimination phase would be over and an event card would be drawn, flipped over like oil rich countries. And then it says the two richest leaders are safe for the next elimination phase. And in this case, if there are only two players left and they can't be eliminated, which will push the game along. And if there were three players, maybe that person who has the least amount of currency, which um, can be devised based on ties or something in the rulebook that explains that, but that player would get eliminated. So for instance, if Lincoln were to have six as opposed to five, then unfortunately Ivan the Terrible would be the person that has to get voted out. Everyone would have to vote for him. So having money is just as important as having influence. And of course, the cards here denote the possible amount of rounds in the game, but it's also possible to end early as well. With more players comes more time, with less players make some quicker games, obviously. Uh, then it goes back to the production phase, in which players are going to be able to purchase one of these cards or exchange one of these cards uh, for five currency, as well as gathering more currency, and then moving on to the buying phase and repeating until there's only two people left in the game, but there's also variants for that as well. So for instance, if there's just two people left, Ivan and Lincoln, then what's going to happen is everybody in the UN is going to vote to determine which one of these two is going to become the supreme leader of of supreme leader and the way you have to do that is to explain to them in this kind of like uh 
uh, speech, if you will. Oh, I did this to you because it was the best play. And oh, you were the best player, which is why I chose you out. And oh, I did this because I'm Ivan the Terrible. And so these guys are going to vote to determine which one of you two is the winner. However, there are some different things that could happen as well. So maybe not the supreme victory, but there's other victories. Like, for instance, you can have a leader victory, in which case maybe Abraham Lincoln has a nuke and he can nuke Ivan the Terrible. And of course, if there, if that, if that happens, then Abraham Lincoln wins without the absolute victory. He doesn't even need that. And in the other sense, if it's a tie. So if there's a tie for absolute victory, then they vote again. If there's still a tie, then the player with the most money wins, followed by the most influence, followed by the most collective value in strategy cards. So there are multiple ways to win the game. And in the event of certain ties, there's also ways to make sure that you are still the supreme leader of the game. <laughs> Supreme Leader. So the new stuff in Supreme Leader is quite intriguing. We're going to discuss that as well as some of the new cards as well. And the first thing I want to talk about is political agendas here. Like finish them. A player you voted for in the elimination phase was eliminated in that round. It's going to score you 10. These add a nice interesting secret objective in which case you're able to use them to lie about or not to. So you can say oh I have to remove this player and if I do I get 20 or 30 you know currency and then I'll give you 15 if you help me succeed in my objective. But in fact, you had no interest in eliminating that player. You had an interest in eliminating somebody else, in which case they help you in some way and you get rid of one of the competition, making it easier to get rid of somebody else, right? And that, that's kind of very beneficial. Or uh, in act, you're trying to sabotage them in some way and activate one of these cards here. Like the enemy of the UN, during the deliberation phase, tell the UN you will vote in accordance with them and then don't do it. So you can actually, it's going to scare people. The moment you use this card, the UN's never going to trust you again. So you have to be really aware that when you use some of these cards, they can be rather dangerous. Like Betrayal. Vote in accordance with one active, with an active player for one round, and then in the following elimination phase, vote for this player. So <laughs> you're like, oh, we're going to work together. And then all of a sudden you're not going to work together. So a lot of these cards change the game and you might want to vote with one way or another way based on people you like, but this is going to make it more difficult for you to want to work with maybe your best friend or your husband or wife, for instance, in which case now you have to eliminate them for one reason or another. Uh, these political agenda cards give you value, and of course they, uh, they're they going to help you decide how and where the game takes place. You can choose to use them or not, but I personally enjoy these. Like, fake friends, vote to eliminate someone you previously voted in accordance with. So all these cards are, are pretty funny, and they're used to make the game a little more enticing. They also have new character cards, but a lot of the artwork is still to be released. Let's just talk about their abilities. Like Leonidas, he is uh, not able to be eliminated by vote during the elimination phase. So how do you get rid of him? You gotta figure out a different way, right? Charles de Gaulle, once per round, Charles de Gaulle may steal a strategy card and he may sell his strategy card to the bank at their full, uh, sell his strategy cards to the bank at their full value. That's really useful, but it also puts a big target on your back. Augusto Sandino. Sandino can keep his strategy cards hidden and does not have to reveal them if asked. During the buy phase, he can draw the bottom card of the strategy deck for free. Another very good one here. Ivan the Terrible, you know this is going to be a crazy one. Once per game, when the votes are cast during the elimination phase, he can invert the vote. The player with the least amount of votes is eliminated, and if a tie occurs, Ivan decides who is eliminated. Ivan cannot have his strategy cards or his income stolen, but... He doesn't have a whole lot of currency. So a lot of these cards kind of fluctuate as to, you might have a lot of influence and currency, but your special's not so good, or vice versa in some way. And you know, let's talk about che, Gu che Guevara. During the production phase, he can copy the special ability of another player, but he has to be red. And he must announce this publicly once per game. Che may force a player to draw a new player card. If Fidel Castro's in the game, they cannot have their cards or money stolen. So he can actually change how you're going to be playing the game. And if he's nervous about it, you can say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess things over or change things up a little bit. And these add a lot to the game as well. Uh, I like the idea of getting random ones, but sometimes I also like to pick my own. So I'll randomly just pick the character I like best over the ability, which I'm sure if you did that, then people might say, okay, you can't do that anymore, but I still like doing it. Uh, and then, of course, the event cards, right? There's a whole lot of new event cards in here, uh, like the bipolar system. The next elimination phase, the two players with the most money are the only two players eliminated for elimination, or eligible for elimination. So it kind of turns that whole 
the people with the most money are now saved into the people the most money are now in a, a heap load of trouble there's also green cards that get added and that's dependent on the number of players in the game the more players the more likely you're going to see some green cards and allow people to get people back into the game active players have a vote to bring back one un player un members then vote to eliminate one active player at the same time so this is kind of a swap from a one un to an active power and an active power to a un a nuclear fallout every remaining active player draws a card from the deck the player who draws the highest value can select one un member un member to resume play the revived player may choose to take one of any of the drawn strategy cards and discard the rest oh, that's really really nice and of course there's a ton of different buy cards that i could go into but they basically are just uh, cards that have effects on them you have to purchase provided you have the influence and they do something really cool red cards become immune to strategy cards for the two rounds upon activation then discard so they all have their own unique aspects to them there's nuclear weapons you can use there's napalm strikes like all other leaders lose their vote you and the un members must decide which active player to eliminate during the elimination phase your vote cannot be changed or altered by any means and then discard this card it's a very very expensive card but it's very very powerful and having cards in this game is going to influence what people want to do about you so holding on to nuclear weapons is going to make people very very nervous about you and you have to kind of socialize your way in to stay relatively neutral with with scary cards on your field there's some other ones that are maybe not as nasty like for instance moral support here play this card to, uh, to choose to buy first in the next buy phase and then and then you can discard this and you can play it on yourself so uh it, it, it's not as like oh okay this person's gonna buy first we have to eliminate him but it's somebody with a nuke or a napalm strike or something like that is a very dangerous player especially the characters um that have low income but a high active ability this can make people rather worried and the stakes are high in this game there's a lot of social action going on determining oh who should we eliminate and why and remember if you eliminate these people will they still like you at the end of the game and it's probably not usually as a un player you're having to choose between the lesser of the two evil people in the room which is probably why i never win but i also really like this game it plays five to ten but realistically the more players the better due to the amount of elimination in the game and the fact that elimination doesn't mean you're out you can still get back in with green card event cards as well as the fact that you still participate in voting for players to be ousted as as well as players to win the game essentially you're needed in order to determine who wins so it, it, it's not as like oh like werewolf warp you're out that's it go go have a beer and, and and sit there for 20 minutes you get to still interact in the game and as you members you can still gain currency and while you can't buy cards you can trade currency to other players to obtain cards and whatnot which is kind of a nice little trade-off as well so the un actually becomes this powerful force at the end of the game where at first there's none of them and then all of a sudden they're all working together scheming as to who's going to win supreme leader like i said before in my previous review i really like this game it's really engaging it has a nice social deduction aspect and everything they've added in the game just gives you more supreme leader the only main change as far as what the game provides now is the political agenda cards which is also a nice feature in a hidden role or hidden like allies type game and your social deduction so to speak this now adds this additional hidden objective where you can no longer trust anyone as to what they have to say makes it even more challenging to determine whether or not you want to believe this specific person but overall this game is a heck of a lot of fun and for those of you who are into the social deduction aspect the bluffing aspects and the games in which you're just trying to successfully become the last member standing or the most important person in the room you're gonna like this one i mean I did. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment, as well as take a look at the game Supreme Leader. It's gonna have a bigger box too with this expansion thing, I'm pretty certain, because all the cars just fit in. They give you, they fill that box up for you guys, which is really cool of them. But I'm pretty sure with the expansion and all the extra cards, literally the extra cards in the expansion and then all that other whatnot, is double the game size as well as these additional political agenda cards so go ahead and take a look down below in the description if you're interested in more of this supreme leader game as well as checking our website unfilteredgamer.com blog post giveaways kickstarter list and more and our friends everythingboardgames.com and the giveaway geek all right guys that's all i got for this time and as always i look forward to seeing you guys next time <laughs>